If you're looking for a video that shows you everything you need to do to your Bermuda lawn each year, all in one place, congratulations, you found it. We begin in January. Now, we're not gonna move mountains to start the year, but we're gonna get a little bit of work done. The grass is uh, a little matted down from the winter so far, and Christmas lights are just up after the holidays, so I wanna get out in the lawn and get whatever remaining leaves are left from the fall out of the flower beds, out of the edges along the sidewalks and the driveway. And we're just gonna clean things up a little bit and fluff that grass up just to make it look a little bit prettier. Once we've got all the leaves up, we're gonna run the lawnmower over it just a couple times to mulch things up, and that's pretty much it. And all this is doing is going to prepare us for our first major application of the year, and that is a pre-emergent. We're gonna time this to where maybe we have a little rain in the forecast, because this pre-emergent, my favorite, Weed Stop for Lawns Plus Crabgrass Preventer, needs to be watered in to activate the ingredients. So we'll get that down sometime around the first of each year. Once that's on the ground, there's nothing left to do till March. Everything's looking good, no weeds in the lawn, but we gotta throw another round of that pre-emergent down to prevent the crabgrass that could come up later in the spring and summer. Then we move into April, then we start getting into the swing of things. We're gonna clean out our flower beds, get all the junk out of them, put new mulch down, pretty those up, and then it's time to scalp. We need to scalp that lawn down, open that turf and that soil up to some sunshine, some airflow and warmer temperatures so we can start greening up a lot faster. I'll do it first with the rotary mower to get the worst of it up and then we move on over to the real mower to really get it down low, almost down to the dirt. And then we're gonna start seeing things green up pretty quickly after that. Not gonna do much for the rest of April until May. Then we start seeing our green grass really starting to show and it's time for our first round of fertilizer. We're gonna use a triple 10 and just the ProCare Natural Organic. Little bit of both to get us both effects of a synthetic fertilizer and a slow release organic fertilizer. That's gonna be round number one in May. And then from that point on, it's just starting to get into our regular mowing routine. We're gonna mow probably not quite two to three times a week, but at least once a week at this point. And if we have any weeds popping up, that's when I like to use a post-emergent herbicide in May. Haven't had to deal with that in some time though. Here we are in June, things are really starting to move now. You can see all the spring dead spots really bad in my old lawn this time but we're ready for our second application of fertilizer and we're going to time that around the time we want to level our lawn. I like to do the lawn leveling in June. That's when temperatures starting to warm up. The Bermuda grass starts actively growing. So depending on your grass type, you want to make sure it's actively growing when you level your lawn. For me, it's June. Some folks like to do it in July with Bermuda grass, but I want to beat the really bad heat okay so if you want to see how i do all these leveling projects i've got videos about not only this but everything else we're talking about in this video all across my channel so go check out some of the other videos and you'll get more in-depth discussions about everything we're talking about here so once we've got the leveling done now we're just going to let that grass grow back in we got to make sure we keep it watered at this point, we're gonna be on our pretty uh, regular watering routine, trying to get around one inch a week. We're mowing a lot more at this time too, in June, especially heading into July. Definitely mowing twice a week, but all that sand is starting to disappear. The more we mow, the more we water, the quicker it grows with those hotter temperatures. And then by the time you know it, after covering your lawn with all that sand, guess what? You're back to normal and it looks so much better at that point. Mowing is so much more enjoyable because you're not bouncing that lawnmower all over the place. And it's really starting to look good all across the lawn. Then we're heading into the dog days of summer in July. Things are looking really, really good there. Just keeping up with our inch of water a week. Mowing, mowing, and mowing some more. That's about all we really have to do in the really hot part of the summer. We're going to throw down our third 
round of fertilizer in July as well. And just about the point where we start getting everything looking really in tip top shape. The edges are looking awesome. The flower bed is looking sweet. We're just kind of in our normal routine of maintenance at this point. We've already done a lot of the heavy lifting earlier in the spring. Things have kind of slowed down as far as major projects go. We're just doing our regular mowing, edging, blowing, watering, and just trying to enjoy the summer. It's around 4th of July. Things are uh, really cranking up with the summer activities. So we're taking it easy through most of the middle part of the summer. But I got bad news. If you get to this point and you think everything is just perfect, well, that brings us to another opportunity to mess it up as we head into August. And that's for our height of cut reset. We're gonna scalp it down just a little bit more so we can reset things, but still give us time to grow back in through the end of August and into September. Here we are, it's September time, the final application of fertilizers going down. So is our final application of pre-emergent and we're getting this lawn ready to go back to sleep. And depending on your temperatures and location in September, the days are getting shorter, temperatures are dropping, that color starts fading, and we start seeing some of the first signs of the oncoming fall through September. It's not looking as good as we want it to, but it's the nature of the beast. Sometime the end of September or October, that's when we'll get our final mow in on the lawn, and then the color and the quality of the look of the lawn really starts going downhill. We're starting to see a little dormancy set in, the leaves on the trees are turning red. They're starting to fall off. And then by the end of October, yeah, the oncoming dormant season is imminent, especially after that first frost or freeze. There's nothing we can do at that point. By November, barely any green left in lawn. Christmas lights are going up. There's not much left to do at this point. We're right into the Christmas season. The Christmas lights are looking awesome. All we have to do is enjoy our lawn until the beginning of next year. And then when January hits, you know what happens. It all starts all over again.